the disintegrating buildings of Cuba's once magnificent capital, a reflection of a crumbling economy in what was once regarded as the jewel of the Caribbean. It's as though the country had been frozen in time, back to 1962, to when the United States declared an economic, financial and diplomatic embargo against its tiny communist neighbor. It was at the height of the Cold War. 75-year-old Rolando Ignacio Ruiz was 15 then, just three years after the triumph of the Cuban Revolution. 60 years later, he laments that the embargo is still in place. They should have removed it long time ago. If after all this time the United States hasn't achieved anything, it certainly won't now. It only hurts our people, but the government remains in place. He's not wrong. The world's longest economic embargo has certainly hurt ordinary Cubans, limiting access to medicine, cheap U.S. imports, technology and credit through a U.S. dollar-dominated financial system. Washington's purpose has always been to modify or force out Cuba's one-party communist system, but clearly it's failed miserably. On the contrary, in Cuba's case, the embargo has become a fundamental component for the survival of the Cuban state and its current government. The tougher the sanctions, the easier it is to accuse the United States of violating sovereignty, destabilizing the country and organizing rebellion. That is exactly what happened when economic hardships and restrictions on freedom of expression exploded into unprecedented mass demonstrations last year. Referring to 60 years of economic embargo, President Miguel Díaz-Canel alluded to sanctions against Cuba's allies, Venezuela and Nicaragua. This criminal and immoral policy imposed systematically against us is a massive violation of the human rights of the Cuban people, and it is the same one that is now threatening and attacking other nations of our region with unilateral coercive measures. Harsh sanctions against Venezuela and milder ones against Nicaragua's Daniel Ortega have in fact encouraged alliances with China, Russia and Iran, making them less dependent on the U.S. I don't know of any case in Latin America where sanctions have produced the desired results, even partially. The same might be said for unilateral sanctions in other parts of the world. But while they may not be effective, they remain Washington's preferred means of persuasion. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera.